What is up guys, Speed here, and today we're back with something I talked about within the Game League Discord recently, and that is a talent tier list. Well, I'm not doing a full one, I think the talents are pretty close. There's a lot of like mediocre talent trees, so it's very hard for me to kind of tier list these, right? I think there's a few in particular that are at the top, and a few that definitely need buffs, so that's what we're going to be covering today. The S tier, the A tier, the C tier, and the D tier. But the B tier, like which is the majority of heroes, I left out because there's just way too many. But I'm sure you guys are going to have a lot of comments on what I missed because there was a lot I was on the edge about, right? There's definitely a lot of potential honorable mentions, and I want to hear from you guys what you think are heroes with awful talent trees and heroes with top tier talent trees that I missed. Or if you just agree with me because, you know, why wouldn't you want to agree? With your boy speed right before we jump into the video i want to let you guys know that you can check out guides just like this one made by top tier pros over at gameleaf.com we have thousands of guides that can teach you the game of dota 2 in depth and help you gain mmr much quicker than you usually would now let's jump into it first off at number one starting from the top of the s tier talents is weaver weaver's talents are absurd straight up there is nothing else to say about them. Having a 35% XP gain talent on a hero that can't farm that fast is incredible, right? Weaver naturally can't snowball in terms of farm, but this 35 XP gain talent allows him to snowball a lot faster than he typically would. And not only that, it allows him to get to his next talents, which are also fantastic. You can get 14 strength, which makes you much tankier at level 15 or 20 mana break also fantastic and then at level 20 you get the two swarm attacks to kill having to attack that little bug thing that you can barely attack as is six times six times it's obnoxious and finally at level 25 the 200 sakushi movement speed bonkers talent just bonkers it's just bonkers you're a race car you're lightning mcqueen in a bug form it's really good all right next up we have troll warlord now troll warlord just solid talents at every single level right and not only that, you get to your talents. You're a hero that naturally farms a lot and pushes in lanes. And as a result, you're going to get your talents. At level 10, you can either become tanky with your 250 health, or you can simply get 10 agility, which is great on a hero that wants to farm and do damage. At level 15, you get a fantastic 90 whirling axes damage talent, which works both on your range and melee axes talent. So basically, it's 180 more damage on what, like the 5 second cooldowns that your spells are. Really good for farming, really good for fighting. Overall, it's a fantastic talent. So much so that Topson has even gone magic damage builds on troll yes i recommend you look it up if you haven't seen it at level 20 you get 40 damage and at level 25 you can either get the whirling axis cooldown which is quite good with your level 15 or if you're purely right click the strong dispel which is really good late game having a strong dispel next up at s tier is one that's i think maybe a little bit debatable but is easily up there in my mind at least towards the top which is drow ranger now why is drow have good talents right her level 10 level 15 even level 20 are not that good. At level 10, you get 5 stats. Okay, that's alright. Maybe movement speed if you want it. At level 15, you get agility. The gust distance knockback is usually just a grief for any drow player. You could probably uh, attest to this. It kind of just pushes people too far away. Um, and at level 20, you only get either a longer gust silence duration, which is okay, but typically you can kill people in the duration anyway. It's like 6 seconds. Or 25% uh, evasion, which typically won't save you as drow. It's not that it's bad, just these talents are mediocre, right? They're mediocre, but what makes Drow's talents broken? Her level 25. The 50% cooldown reduction is potentially the best talent in the game. The best talent in the game. If you don't know why, let me quickly explain it. Drow has the ability to push in waves with her E, her active. And when it's on a 50% cooldown, you can almost you can almost always have the waves at the enemy side of the base. So basically, it's like a nature's profit ult is constantly going off. It's near impossible to deal with not only that it also works with gust and not only that it also works with your items and drow buys a ton of active items bkb hurricane pike manta blink dagger shadow blade you buy active items this talent is broken next up on the list is one i think a lot of you guys would have overlooked or potentially overlooked unless you play this hero which is techies techies talents or i don't even know what to say they're just so good at level 10 you can get 30 xp gain on a hero that pushes in endless waves all the time that's just incredible at level 15 you get six mana regen or 300 blast off damage the blast off damage is it's okay right but the six mana regen basically have endless bombs fantastic for techies 
At level 20, you can take 50 movement speed, which is really good if you're scaling into a right click towards the late game, or you can just simply get the 150 gold per minute and scale even further towards your 25. And at 25, the notorious 251 damage talent, right? These talents allow you to go from a quickly snowballing hero at level 10 all the way up to a right clicker at 25. It gives you the ability to scale. That is just game changing for the hero. Next up on the list, we have Doom. Doom's talents, just solid overall. Not only that, Doom's talents are very good from the beginning, right? Doom doesn't necessarily have the best way of getting to high levels. Sure, you could get kills. Sure, you can push in waves of Scorched Earth and eat big creeps with Devour. That's fine, but... What is important to note about Doom is that at level 10, you can either get movement speed on Scorch Earth or damage, both which are super value, especially considering you max them now. These talents, very, very good. At level 15, you probably have, in my opinion, a top 5 talent in the game, which is a 150 Devour Bonus Gold talent, making it a 250 gold bonus every time you devour a creep. Are you kidding me? 250 gold. At level 20, you have Doom DPS, and at level 25, your talents aren't even that great. The Inferno Blade's okay, Cleave's alright, but basically you're 10 and 15, and kinda you're 20. The Doom DPS is quite good. Make this hero a top tier in my opinion. Now moving on towards the A tier list, we're of heroes that have solid talents, um, or at least underrated talents that are up there. First off is Storm Spirit. Now you might question this, right? Storm Spirit, his talents are trash you could put them on the bottom but actually they're quite good mana region allows them to sustain the 80 static remnant allows them to do quite a bit of damage and nearly one shot waves or one shot them or you can take 400 health which prevents you from getting bursted at level 20 you can take the vortex talent which is fantastic with ags or you can just take 30 attack speed which gives you quite a bit of dps and then your 25 is the most obnoxious talent in the game period. It is obnoxious. Not only does it give you a ton of DPS by just laying down remnants heroes can run into, it guarantees that every time you zip cut a wave or have to defend your high ground, there's going to be a kajillion remnants that are killing every single creep. And that just makes it good. Moving on, we have Shadow Fiend. Now Shadow Fiend, just good talents, right? Just overall good talents that make sense with what Shadow Fiend wants. If you're going to go right click, you can take 20 attack speed, presence or FX buildings, into 2 damage per soul, into minus 5 presence aura, or 40% cooldown reduction, or if you're going magic build, you have a perfect sequence as well, which is 8% spell amp, into movement speed, into shadow radius damage, into cooldown reduction. Really just great talents all across the board, right? I don't think there's another hero that matches this, just this sheer solid line of talents that Shadow Fiend gets. Coming up next is something you're probably happy to hear, and a hero that is very popular and becoming more popular recently, which is Pudge. At level 10, you can either get 35 rot damage, which gives you a severe DPS increase, or you can get the devastating 30% XP gain talent. 30% XP gain, that's really good for a hero that's scaling. It gives you more strength, it allows you to get to your level 15, which is pretty good, 13% spell life steal, which then allows you to get to your 20, which is either 15% cooldown reduction, quite good with all the active items Pudge buys, or 180 GPM, which is also great. And then finally, your level 25, which are two of the best talents in the game. Three second dismember duration allows you to control people through BKB endlessly, or allows you to solo kill basically anyone. And the other talent, if you're snowballing, is massive. Literally massive. It makes you massive. Coming up next is Sand King. Sand King has become significantly more popular over the last month. I think people are starting to come to realize how good this hero is again. And part of the reason is his talents. At level 10, you get 200 health or 20 movement speed, right? It allows you to be either a core or a good support. At level 15, you get 40 Sandstorm DPS, which is easily a top tier talent. I know I say this a lot, but right, that's why I'm putting these heroes at the top. 40 Sandstorm DPS for a spell that you max that wins team fights and allows you to farm and take stacks. Basically does everything. Sandstorm literally does everything besides take towers. It's just such a good talent. At level 20, you can either follow up your tanky build, right? Sand Kings buy like Crimson Guard, Pipe, Greaves, all these tanky items. So 10 armor makes you really tanky. Or you can get four epicenter pulses. That is a lot of pulses. And finally, at level 25, you have the obnoxious talents, right? For some reason, Sand King just gets two obnoxious talents. 50 HP regen, right? That you, you build tank items and you get 50 HP regen. You just can't die. Or you can get the more obnoxious, 50% Sandstorm Slow and Blind. People can't move and they can't see. It's like Spectre's old haunt. You just couldn't do anything. And finally, for the best, the last best hero talent 
is brrr, Shadow Shaman. Maybe you guys kind of expected this one. I feel like this one is kind of well known. You will always take the Tome of Knowledge on Shadow Shaman, right? Because at level 10, you get 20% XP gain, which works fantastic with the Tomes and allows you to scale on a hero that farms so much, right? You're one of those supports who always wants to split push and get items. So you get the 20% XP gain at level 15, you get cast range. Cast range is crucial on Shaman, as is you buy Aether Lens. And with this talent, you have a cross map shackle, right? You can shackle someone from anywhere you want. It's it's basically global. At level 20, you can get a 2.5 second shackles duration. And with BKB, you can hold someone out of the fight for 8 seconds, approximately. Like, what the? 8 second disable, that's 2 black holes. Or you can take Ward's max HP if you happen to be going Ags. And finally, at level 25, the very underrated Aether Shock damage allows you to one-shot creep waves at certain points of the game. Or you can get 50 Ward's attack damage with Ags. Nuts. Absolutely nuts. These things shred and solo win games simply through the talents. But finally, now let's move on to the garbage talents. The dumpster tier. The Herald talents. Sorry, Herald players. I love you. I do. I really do. But first off, we have Chaos Knight. Now I know, okay, this is a little controversial, right? I get it. You're looking at his talents right now as we speak. Five all stats into 15 strength or 20 or 12% cooldown reduction. Those are good, right? And then Reality Rift pierces spell immunity into 150 GPM, also pretty good. And then two max Chaos Bolt duration, also solid. But my problem with Chaos Knight is, as is he can't farm that fast, right? Your hero naturally doesn't scale that well or scale that quickly. And as a result, I think Chaos Knight really needs a talent early on, like XP gain or GPM. That might sound kind of crazy. I'm trying to think what else would work, but I feel like his talents don't really work that well. The 12% cooldown reduction feels somewhat underwhelming. 15 strength is solid, but as is you have a lot of strength. This one I'm on the fence about. I think you guys could call me out on this one. I just feel like because he can't get levels, he could use better early talents. His level 10, for instance. Let me know what you think about that. I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say. After that is Treant. Treant's talent are just awkward. I, I don't even know what else you would say. They're just awkward. At level 10, you have a decent two living armor block instances. Not bad if you're maxing living armor. 12% CDR, mediocre at best. And then at level 15, you have the Grief Talents. Okay, if you play Treant, please tell me you feel the same way. Like, what are these talents? It, it, every time you pick 2 second tree response time, you're like, okay, this is either useless or is griefing some... Like, it feels like a grief sometimes against certain heroes when you're, like, cutting down trees to catch people when they're juking. They respawn and you just get cut off. You're like, my Treant's losing me the game through a talent choice. And 90 damage for a hero that has no attack speed. Nah, it doesn't do that much. Your level 20 is okay. But your 25 is also not that good. It's like, alright, but you have to have Ags for one of them, which is just weird. Moving on, we have Meepo. Meepo's sad. I feel bad for Meepo. I really do. I do. This When this hero was popular, his talents were really good. Not only that, all the good ones were earlier on, uh, such as Lifesteal, I believe, was at 15. Now it's at 20. Not only is it at 20, it's also a lower number, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, Meepo... At level 10, gets either 10 damage or 7 strength. It used to be 20 damage, literally double. That's just bad. It just doesn't give you that much. 7 strength is just meh. And then at level 15, you get near useless talents. Poof damage or evasion. That's just so awful. Considering Meepo gets levels early, I understand why these talents kind of have to be bad. Or else the hero would be good, right? It was good when it had good talents. But they just nerfed all the numbers, basically. At level 20, you you only get a 4 second Earthbind cooldown, which is okay, or 10% lifesteal. 10% lifesteal at level 20, that's just not that good. And at 25, poof cooldown and health. Do you really want 400 health? That's not that much. 400, that's just not enough. It's not enough. Moving on is Lunch. If you don't know what Lunch is, it's Lich. Uh, at level 10, 200 health, 20 movement speed, fine. That's okay. Not bad. At level 15, things get sketch. The 120 damage is kind of just useless for a support and the frost blast cooldown you can't even sustain in terms of mana you just don't have that much mana so i think these talents are quite bad at level 20 the frost shield duration is all right but as is you don't really get to these talents so your first 10 and 15 are just kind of mediocre in my opinion they don't do much for the hero they're all right but compared to a lot of other supports who get quite good level 10 talents i think uh it's quite lackluster and finally for the c tier of the lower heroes we have silencer now, Silencer as a core, I guess you could argue, has pretty good talents, but typically Silencer is picked as a support. And at level 10, his talents are unusable for a support. Six armor does basically nothing for supports. 
and 25 attack speed is pretty self-explanatory, pretty bad for a support. At level 15, you can get a GPM talent. Woohoo, GPM, but it's at level 15, and you're a silencer. You're always getting picked on, you're not going to get there. Or 2 intelligence steal, which is not that useful, once again, for a support. Basically, his talents come to you late. If this was a 90 GPM at 10, this hero would have much better talents. Even at level 20, these are useless support talents. Damage and attack range? Meh. And at level 25, you get longer global silence duration, which at that point is already getting purged, or Glaives of Wisdom, which, once again, for support, doesn't do anything. This hero's talents... I, I would even argue I could have put him maybe as the worst. These are quite bad. Now moving on to potentially the worst talents in Dota. We have Invoker. Okay, I get it for all you Invoker means. But he gets Cold Snap. I can, I can Cold Snap all the time. Okay, I get it, alright? But these level 10 talents. What are these level 10 talents? What is this? 30 contact damage. 30 damage. Ghost Walk cooldown. Okay, Ghost Walk cooldown's alright. But it's not that good. It doesn't really... You don't want Ghost... Ghost Walk cooldown at level 10. You're not using Ghost Walk. Okay, what about Wex? Yeah, sure. Not that good. At level 15, the Cold Snap cooldown, it's alright. Forge Spirit, it's alright. But I think the problem with Invoker is mostly is level 10. Like, as is, the hero takes too long to come online, and you just get these awful level 10 talents. And then 15, that don't really help you snowball or fight too, too well. They're just mediocre. At level 20, you start to get a little bit better, right? Your 20 and 25 are pretty good. But the issue with Invoker's Talents is, as I said, 10 and 15, quite mediocre for allowing him to scale. And, like, come online, you, you just get run over, and your talents really don't help you out. Next up is Slark. Raise your hand if you like Slark, right now. Raise it high. Good, no one? Alright, I'm glad. Because his talents are also trash. 6 agility or 10 strength, just very underwhelming numbers. Very underwhelming. At level 15, 20 lifesteal or 30 attack speed, also quite underwhelming. You don't really need lifesteal on Slark, and 30 attack speed is not that much. At level 20, you can get dark pack damage, 150, also underwhelming. Pounce leash, 1.25 seconds, underwhelming. I think you're getting the trend. This hero's talents are underwhelming. Next up, we have Tinker. Tinker's talents, like, the thing is, Tinker doesn't really need talents. Uh, as is, this hero, I think if it had good talents, it would be quite broken it scales quite quick in levels so it doesn't need good talents but its talents are trash 75 cast range mediocre 75 is a very low number or six percent spell amp which is also a very low number and then moving on from there it just kind of gets embarrassing at level 15 you get movement speed or spell life steal these both don't really help your hero at level 20 you also get pretty useless talents eight march of the machine damage a very low number or armor you don't need armor on tinker Really, a lot of the heroes that counter you do magic damage as is, so it doesn't really help. Um, and at level 25, these sounds are okay. If you have an Ags, the laser damage is alright. And Heat Seeking Missile Mini Stun is it's okay, but it's not like... For a level 25, it's somewhat underwhelming. Next up is Klinks. Uh, Klinks is, I think, maybe the worst. I technically didn't put him as the worst, but I, I would argue he is the worst. Or one of the worst. Like, what are these talents? A little... Five armor? <laughs> Your hero's a thousand HP. Why do I want... Like, five armor barely helps you if you get jumped. And 12% match resistance? That's 12%. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Hero's like a thousand HP, right? So it's basically like a hundred health. That's terrible. That's awful. At level 15, you get Searing Arrow to damage. It's 30. Not that high. It's okay. 15 strength is also okay. But it doesn't give you nearly enough to make up for these... Blech. Level 10 talents. What is this? What is this trash? Honestly, please give Clinks a level 10 talents buff. This is just embarrassing. What is this? And then at level 20, you get either 16 health regen, pretty useless, or 125 attack range. That's alright. It's okay, but meh. And then at level 25, you get the somewhat underwhelming Searing Arrows multi-shot. It's not that good. I've seen it in I've seen it in action. I've seen more impressive things in life, trust me, and I don't do anything. And then you have plus three seconds straight duration. Okay, in some games, this is situationally, like, broken, I guess. But at the same time, in many games, at, especially at this point of the game, where everyone has, like, blink or levels, just doesn't do it for you. Just, uh, nah. Sorry, mate. And finally, last but not least, Lonely Druid. He's at the bottom. We know why he's at the bottom. It's the talents. He's trash. Let's get into it. 125 attack range or 250 health. Now that you can't really build the zero right-click anymore, due to all the talent changes... You can't go this 125 attack range. It's it's basically useless. 
The 250 health is also, it doesn't really help you that much. It's like, okay, eh, meh. This hero doesn't really build for health. It doesn't need the health. It's tanky as is. After that, you can either get Spirit Bear Armor or 12 Second Cybertor cooldown. Once again, kind of mediocre. I feel like this hero needs some sort of like damage talent at 10 or 15. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe it would make Lundra way too good. And that's the reason why its talents are mediocre. But even at level 20, you can get Entangled cooldown. Which as is, I, I don't feel like... It sounds good. Like you look at it, it's like, okay, 0 second cooldown. What? 0 second cooldown spell. Any 0 second cooldown spell is going to be good. But Entangle... Not really. And then the battle cry cooldown, it's okay. It's pretty good with the 25 if you take it in coordination with the battle cry grant spell immunity, right? That makes sense. It makes sense. They synergize well there. But the thing is, it's good, but it's not good enough in my opinion. They're just kind of like talents where it's like you take them and you feel like you're basically the same hero. Maybe the 25 you could argue otherwise, but all the other three, I, I feel like your hero doesn't change much. You kind of just stay the same. Um, when you take these talents, that's kind of, that's my verdict on Lundrid. You just don't really change. But thank you guys for watching and sticking with me for this talent tier list, right? This is something a little bit different. I was happy to do it. I, I thought it was kind of an interesting idea. And some of the people on the Discord also backed me up a little bit, I think, I hope. But, uh, yeah. So if you guys enjoyed or you have any heroes you thought I missed or I was dead wrong about, okay, I get it. You know, CK, he's all right, but... If you thought I was missing anything or bitch just being stupid, because I know you guys, that's what you think deep down, then let me know in the comments down below. Also, please do like and subscribe to help the channel grow. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. Guys, before I leave you, I just want to remind you that over at GameLeap.com, you can check out guides just like this one made by top tier pros. It will help you gain MMR faster. It will help you learn the game much more in depth. And overall, just increase the experience of your Dota gameplay as you will crush your opponents simply by knowing more than them.